sacred hour in this very sacred place, uh, and as we do that through the prelude. So I invite you uh, to, to take a deep breath and enter into some uh, centering quiet as we listen to the prelude together.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, do all hearts are open. All desires known in from you, no secrets are heard. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons. of the apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this be a witness, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
from the letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. Forever we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits, who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Adults can be seated. Kids are really most welcome and highly encouraged to come on up. This is an all-ages sermon. What an incredible privilege to have such a multi-generational worship service where we get to hear kids read Holy Scripture. Uh, we get to hear their voices sing out for the entire Eucharistic celebration. Uh, Wonderful, and well done, readers. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your work there. And happy Easter to all of you guys. You know that it's still the Easter season, right? Easter tide. We call it Easter tide, which I think is a super cool word. Um, we have these seven Sundays of Easter before we get to the Feast of Pentecost. And during the season of Easter, for many of our Sundays, we have these very special stories about Jesus raised from the dead. And there aren't very many of these stories, so each one of them is very precious, very special. And, and let, me set the, let me set the stage for what's happening in this particular story. So the disciples are all gathered together, and it's very, very soon after some of them, some of Jesus' friends, have gone to, to be with Jesus' body, to put oils upon it, and his body was gone. It was gone. They'd, and they have no idea what happened to it. And some people are saying he was raised, that they saw an angel or they saw someone dressed in white. And then there are these two guys who were supposedly traveling on their way back from Jerusalem, and Jesus stood in their midst, and they didn't recognize him, and then they went back to have a meal. And as soon as Jesus broke the bread... He disappeared. And so these disciples are probably all over the place with their emotions, right? They're still in the midst of missing him. So some of it is sadness. Some of it is probably anger. Some of it is confusion. Grief has so many big, big emotions. And right into the midst of them, right into the midst of all those emotions, all of a sudden, Jesus appears. And Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, do you think Jesus learned that phrase like in an Episcopal church? No. We learned that phrase from Jesus, right? Because don't we, almost every single week, really every single week, we say, the priest will say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And then what do you all say? and also with you. And then you go around and you say, peace be with you. So there are these moments, there are these times that we are reenacting what happened in the Bible. And every Sunday, and even every Wednesday here, we reenact Jesus saying, peace be with you. Now, what do you all think? When Jesus says, peace be with you, what do you all think that means? That word, peace. Does anyone have any idea what peace means, or what, what it is when Jesus says, peace be with you. Okay, this one first. Happiness and hope. Happiness and hope, beautiful. No war and fighting. Yeah, no war, no fighting. Uh, that's really good. Anyone else have any guesses about what is peace? 
Yeah. Maybe like loving Jesus. Yeah, so peace connected to love and loving God, loving Jesus. I uh, like the presence of God. Yeah, the presence of God in and of itself is like thick peace. Beautiful answers. So the word peace comes from an ancient, ancient word. And in Hebrew, the word is shalom. Have, you, have people heard of shalom? Shalom in Hebrew, right? And the word for peace in Greek is arene. Peace, shalom, arene. And these are all the way through the Bible. There, we see these over and over and over again. And the Bible says that there are, that the, the, the definition of peace, here's what the Bible says, this is what peace is. Peace is when you take things that are far apart, things that are divided, and you bring them back together and you make them whole. Peace is wholeness. So the reason that peace is the opposite of war is because war is, is humankind's most egregious, most obnoxious version of division. So peace is when you bring things back together and make them whole. Peace is taking things that are really complex, things that are really different, and blending them into one whole. Do you know sometimes we use the word harmony for peace? Like, oh, uh, that, I, I just, that, that scene is so harmonious. Have you ever heard that? So, and what is harmony? Harmony, as the choir will tell you, is taking all of these different sounds, low voices, a little bit higher voices, super high voices, and blending them into one sound. So peace, shalom, irene, is making whole. And so the Bible also says that peace can exist on these different levels. So do you think, like, can you have peace inside one person? Do you ever, do you ever, how would that work? Like, what would it feel like to be peaceful inside? Yeah. You happy with yourself? Yeah, you're happy with yourself. Calm. Calm. No fighting, no worries, just happy. Yeah, serene, happy. So, um, so there's a sense that, a sense that when someone has peace within themselves in their own heart, there's this deep sense of balance, like all these different parts of their life are in harmony, are balanced with one another. And maybe your emotions on the surface are kind of all roiling around, but it, it's like you've got this deeper level, like you're under the waves. So peace can happen for an individual. Peace can also happen between people and, but, and in little groups of people. So, you know, in some cultures, like, like when you see your friend on the playground and you haven't seen your friend for a little while, what do you say? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi, what's up? Well, in some cultures, when, they, when you see your friend on the playground and you haven't seen each other for a little while, you say peace. Some cultures still today. And that makes so much sense because we were divided, we hadn't seen each other, and now we're back together. Now we're whole again. Peace. Um, in, in Muslim cultures, um, in Islam, when people see each other, they say, Salam Alaikum. Salam. What does Salam sound like? Well, this is true. This is true. Does salam sound a little like shalom? Right? Salam alaikum, shalom. They come from the same roots. That's like Arabic, but it also has these very, very ancient roots. So peace can exist within one person's heart. Peace can exist with, within, between people and little groups. And then the Bible says peace can exist on this much, much bigger scale, like whole cities, whole countries, whole, the whole world can experience shalom, irene, peace. And if the whole country is experiencing shalom, this means every, everything is working together. Everything's in balance. Everyone has enough to eat, Everyone has clothes. Everyone has enough money to take care of their family. Yeah. What about Ukraine? Yeah. So this is why we pray for peace in these places where there is such deep 
deep division, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Sudan. That is exactly what, that's what our deepest yearning is, is that some of that shalom, some of that arena, some of that peace would be there. And so, um, and this is what the, the, the prophets of Israel are always talking about. They're like, if you follow God's law, if you walk in God's way, if you draw close to God, there will be peace, shalom, throughout the land, this deepest sense of peace. Okay, so let's go back to the story itself. You guys are doing great. You're hanging with me. I, I can see it. Let's go back to the story itself. So Jesus shows up, and what does Jesus say again? Peace, a little bit more. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And so what, what is Jesus trying to communicate when Jesus shows up in the midst of his disciples and he says, peace be with you? Now, one thing is just, it's a greeting. It's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? On another level, Jesus is saying, Jesus is coming into the midst of all of their grief, all of these big emotions, the sadness, the anxiety, the fear, and Jesus is saying, peace be in your heart. You can have all those emotions, but, but look, I'm alive. You don't have, you, everything's okay. Even the thing that you're the most afraid of, that your friend has died, or that you'll one day die. Life is bigger than death. Love, God's love is bigger than death. Look, give me, he's a, and Jesus is like, give me a piece of fish. Give me a piece of fish. And they're like, what? And he's like, I'm going to take this piece of fish and I'm going to eat it right in front of you to show you that I'm not a ghost. Ghosts are, ghosts are like creatures of the dead. I am alive. Peace be with you. Peace be in your heart. Another thing that Jesus is saying is like, remember when we talked about peace can also be between people? So Jesus is saying to these disciples, peace among us. And that is incredibly important because, do you remember what, what were things like between Jesus and the disciples the last time they were hanging out together? Were things good? Does anybody remember the last time before this moment, the last time Jesus and the disciples were together? Was that a hand, Will? Yeah. Uh, when he was crucified? Yeah, a little bit before that, but yes, the passion, yep. When they all betrayed him. Yes. So where were they? They were in the garden. So, so they're in the garden. And, you know, how often does Jesus ever ask anything of his disciples? But Jesus, his mind is racing. His heart is racing. Little drops of blood are on his forehead. He's unbelievably stressed out. And he says, I need you. I need my friends. I need you to stay awake with me because I am so, so scared. And his friends say, Jesus, we're here for you. We, 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 we will never, ever leave you. We're, and then they, and they just like, and they start sleeping. And Jesus is like, you can't stay awake for even one hour. And, you know, Peter had said, Jesus, no matter what happens to you, I'm never going to leave you. And even Peter, he deserts Jesus. So Jesus is all alone. So when Jesus comes and he stands in the midst of his disciples and Jesus says, peace be with you, some of that is, I forgive you. I'm letting go what happened in the past. We are reconciled. We are one. I am back with you and I'm going to let that go and I'm going to forgive you. Peace be with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the last thing I think, the deepest, on the deepest level, this is what Jesus is saying when he says, peace be with you. Jesus is saying, my whole life has been about shalom, irene, peace. My whole life has been about reconciliation, restoration. Do you remember how when Jesus would, would eat with people? Yeah, right. So, Jesus would, t there would be these people, these outcast people who are outcasts. People would say like, well, you don't want to have a meal with that guy over there because he's done X, Y, and Z. Or you don't want to, you don't ever want to eat with her. You definitely don't want to invite her to your party. And what would Jesus do? Jesus would be like, that's exactly who I'm inviting to my party. And he would be like, let's hang out. Let's eat together. You have a place. 
you have a place with God and you have a place with me. I'm putting things back together, shalom, making things whole. And even, I mean, that was from the very beginning. Do you guys remember, like, when we had all the angels? Who was, was anybody an angel here for the Christmas pageant? That was, like, a long time ago. Okay, now, this is a quiz. Do you remember the line that the angels said? You remember? Okay, wait, hold on. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill to all. Wow, that was amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, peace and goodwill towards all. So... From the very beginning, Jesus is, his reign as, as king is about peace. And so Jesus is, and Jesus is also creating this community of peace. He's creating this whole community, and we're a part of that community. All these people, all these people who come from different perspectives, they have different experiences, they have different beliefs, they sing in different ways, all of us come together grounded in the love of Jesus, week in and week out. I'm going to end with a story. Now, this is another ancient story. This is a really old story. Maybe some of you have heard this story. Maybe some of you have heard this story. It's a different story. It doesn't come from the Bible. The story goes like this. There was once this man, a long, 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 long time ago, there was once this man, and this man loved, he loved art, and he had all kinds of resources. He had a lot of money. And he was also a very, very faithful man. He loved God. He loved Jesus. And this man wanted to see a picture of perfect peace. So he went around to all the artists in his village and in the neighboring villages and then further in the countryside. And he says, show me the best pictures of peace that you have. And the artists would bring out their work and they would show it. He said, oh, it's pretty good, pretty good. But nothing satisfied him. And so he said, I'm going to have a contest. And I want all the best artists in all the land to, to show what they think is the perfect picture of peace. And so all the artists got to work painting and scribbling and drawing. And, 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 and after a couple months, they all gathered together in the city square. And the man had gone through each one of these paintings, and he had judged them. And they put a cover over them, and the whole city came together. The whole town, the countryside, the village, everyone came to the city square. It was packed. And then one by one, he would unveil this picture of perfect peace. And at first, there were like some kind of, there, there were some little oohs and ahs. Ooh, that's nice. Ah, that's nice. And then the oohs and ahs got a little bigger and a little bigger until there were only two big paintings left, both of them veiled. And he goes up to one of them and he pulls off the veil and the crowd says, wow. Because it's this beautiful, still lake. Serene not a ripple on the lake. It's reflecting the mountains in the background. It's reflecting the pine trees. There's this sort of soft blush of dawn in the sky. And everyone says, this has to be the perfect picture of peace. And, but there's one more. And so he goes up to the other painting and he lifts off the veil. And in this painting, the first thing that you see are these big, dark thunderheads, big clouds that look like they're about to explode with thunder and lightning. And then, and then you see this huge waterfall that's pouring over this rocky cliff. And as you look at it, it's almost like you can feel the spray that's just like spraying your face just looking at it. And there's this one little tree on the edge of the cliff, one little birch tree, with spindly little limbs, and the birch tree is bent over from the raging wind. And in, in, and in one of the limbs, at the very end of one of the limbs, bent over in front of the raging waterfall, the, the, there's a little crook in the limb. And in that little crook, there's a nest. There's a little yellow bird 
that is there in the nest. And underneath the little bird are these chicks. And the little bird has her eyes closed. And even though with the storm clouds coming and with the waterfall raging and with the wind blowing, she just sort of bobs, bobs in the wind on her little tree. And she's at peace. She is at peace. And the man says, this is the perfect picture of peace. Because no matter what storms come, no matter what waterfalls rage, no matter how hard the wind blows, if we are rooted in the love of God in Jesus Christ, we have this deep, deep peace that nothing, nothing can disturb. All right, okay, okay, good. You guys did great. Thank you. Amen. Go back to your, go back to your parents. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God. Begotten not made of one being in the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Spirit. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the King of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is washed and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic we acknowledge one baptism in the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Prayers of the people. At the, big, at the bidding, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Please respond with bring new life to the world. Alleluia. Living God, we pray for your church universal, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Matthew, our assistant bishop. We pray for St. Mark's Haiti and All People's Church, Milwaukee, and for the Diocese of New Walla, Tanzania. We pray that your church might be raised to new life, to be risen body of Christ in the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Bring new life to the world. Alleluia. Living God, we pray for all who govern and hold authority throughout the world, especially Joseph, our president, the Congress and the Supreme Court. We pray in places that shattered are shattered by violence, especially Gaza, Sudan, and Ukraine. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Bring life to the world. Alleluia. Living God, we pray that we might be given a reverence for the whole earth as your own creation, that we might use its resources in the service of, the, of others and to honor and glory. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We bring life to the world. Alleluia.
living God, we pray for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who are trying to bring signs of, res of your resurrection into their midst. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Living God, we pray for the healing in body, mind, and spirit, especially for Ken Balmester, Jun Berry, Joanne Durrett, Karen Sosterch, and those whom we either name silently or love. We pray that your power might break every bond so that we might humble ser humbly serve you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Living God, through the resurrection of your Son, you destroy the power of death. We pray for all those whom we love but no longer see, especially Allison Geimer, sister of Tracy Geimer, and those who we either name silently or love. We pray that the power for your resurrection may lift us up both now and forevermore. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh love of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And uh, what's going on around the world, uh, the conflict and the fighting and the wars, what's going on in our neighborhoods, in our country, and perhaps in our hearts, uh, let us offer special peace to each other. The peace of the Lord be with you. All right, just a few announcements this morning. I think Chris Bender has an announcement about a new sewing project. Take it away. Good morning. My name is Chris Bender, and I am a sewer, or a seamstress, or a hoarder. No, I'm not a hoarder, but I've been um, sewing for a long time. You don't need to know how many years. And I love it. And I've sewn for my kids, to my daughter's chagrin, and I've sewn wedding dresses, and I've sewn a lot of other stuff. And I know that there are other <clears throat> seamstresses in the congregation. And if you're like me, I hope not, um, you kind of keep your scraps. Or you see fabric and you go, oh, I've got to have that because I'm going to make a bedspread. And then you don't. So when you move and your kids pack up all of your stuff, they look at the fabric in the bins, in the bins, in the bins, and they say, Mom, that fabric is from an outfit that you made me in fourth grade. Get rid of it. I'm not asking you for polyester double knit. I'm not asking you for anything in specifics right now. <clears throat> but to be aware that these bins are going to be in the Good Shepherd Room. And there is a committee that is collecting fabric, scissors, rulers,
thread, um, tape measures, zippers, zippers are a big item, to be donated to a school for <clears throat> girls in Tanzania. And it's the school that we have helped establish, and now we want <clears throat> this school for sewers to grow. So you will be hearing more and more about this over the coming months, particularly all the way through summer. I cannot give you the specifics right now or the correct yardage because we don't know. But the more information we get, we will share it with you. And this is just one um, crate, but I know there are quite a few. So if you would help us fill them, and then we're going to, Oswald <coughs> is going to ship them off to Tanzania. And God only knows what they're all going to create with them, but at least we can share with them. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Chris. That, and that is a really incredible sewing project they have going over there. It's completely sustainable, small business. They're doing the vestments for the diocese. Um, they're doing really some incredible work. I know Elizabeth Draper also has an announcement. Come on up, Elizabeth. While Elizabeth is coming, I'll announce that we have a newcomer brunch. I think we have 25 people who are attending this newcomer brunch. If you're new um, and you're, this is like your first day, uh, feel free just to come and get some food. You'll hear a little bit more about the church. You'll hear uh, why I love the Episcopal Church. Um, so you'll maybe find out a little bit more there. Um, and if you're really, really hungry and you just want to come, and it's going to be good food, and we, we will uh, certainly let you do that too. Yeah, please. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Draper. I am a member of the Outreach Committee, and we want to invite everyone to join us on Friday night, May 10th, from 5.30 to 7.30 for a spaghetti dinner and bingo night. Um, raise your hand if you want to play bingo. Yes, children, tell your parents, we got to sign up for bingo night. It's going to be great. Um, this dinner is going to benefit the Children's Garden at All People's Church. It's going to be a free will donation at the door. We're going to have spaghetti. We're going to have meatballs for people who want meatballs. All the Parmesan cheese, salad, garlic bread, home-baked desserts from the Outreach Committee. You do not want to miss this night. So this is for all ages, for everyone. Um, we hope to see you there. Please mark your calendars again Friday, May 10th. And Dolly and I will be out in the, um, in the hall after church for RSVPs. We do want RSVPs so we have a good sense of how many prizes we need to get for all you bingo winners. So thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. We now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But if we are we bounded to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to new life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when they gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and you, when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recording his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we faithfully receive this holy sacrament 
and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day, bring us all your sins into the joy of the eternal kingdom. For this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and the glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our be in heaven, your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we will be those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of the heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our special Easter blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in burst in the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and men with you always.
us go forth into the world rejoicing in the presence of the living Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.